when you're in winter's favorite town. The snow-covered mountains surround you. A historic Main Street charms you. And every day brings a new adventure. Welcome to Park City, Utah. Naturally, winter's favorite town. <sighs> Join the experience at visitparkcity.com. Ryan Reynolds here for, I guess, my 100th Mint commercial. No, 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 don't, no, don't, no. I mean, honestly, when I started this, I thought I only had to do like four of these. I mean, it's unlimited premium wireless for $15 a month. How are there still people paying two or three times that much? I'm sorry, I shouldn't be victim blaming here. Give it a try at mintmobile.com slash switch whenever you're ready. $45 upfront payment equivalent to $15 per month. New customers on first three-month plan only. Taxes and fees extra. Speed slower above 40 gigabytes. See details. Productivity, winning strategies, and aligning employer-employee goals. If this sounds like something your business could use more of, then you've come to the right place. The Business Mechanic Show with your host, Vaughn Sigmund. Let Vaughn show you how to develop, improve, and jumpstart your business. So now, please welcome the host of The Business Mechanic, Vaughn Sigmund. Welcome to The Business Mechanic Show. This is your host, Vaughn Sigmund, co-founder of Results Driven Leadership, where we provide you with the tools, the skills, the knowledge you need to become an incredible leader. Once again, I'm joined today on the show by my friend, longtime friend and co-worker, John Karawaki. Hello, John. Hey, folks. How are you? Welcome from in. John, it's, it's no surprise to me that listenership is going up like crazy as you and Eric have joined. Eric's at the bank doing something today, so he can't record with us. But John is here. And John, you bring such valuable insights. You've got such a wealth of knowledge and background. And it is such a joy to have you here. And oh, by the way, folks, if you're listening to this, you're a fan of the Business Mechanic Show, please give us a, a like on this, share it, follow us. That helps our algorithm to reach more listeners like you are looking to gain that edge to improve their performance in management and leadership. We'd sure appreciate that. So give us a follow, give us a like, share our content. Let more people know about the Business Mechanic Show. We'd surely appreciate that. So let's get into the meat of things here. I'll give you a little bit of background. I, in the different courses that I've designed through the years, we talk about competency-based interviews. We talk about competency-based reviews, performance reviews. The one thing I haven't done is create a course around the importance of all this. How do you create the framework around this talent, around these competencies? Technically, it's called a competency-based framework. That sounds really fancy to me. But so I've, I'm just in the finishing stages, touches of completing a book on this. It'll be on Amazon in a couple of weeks. We'll, we'll keep you posted on that. It's a full multi-chapter ins and outs of creating the framework so that you can master the talent you have within you. But let's break down what that talent is around competencies. I want to pull this thing together around the back end, the why. Why is this so important to your business? So John and I today are going to talk about what competencies are, what the different types of competencies are, both skilled competencies and inherent competencies. We're also going to talk about what some of the positive ones are. We're going to talk about some of the negative ones. We're going to also discuss and share with you what the how the negative ones impact your organization. You may be, notice some of the signs that are taking place in your organization around some of these negative competencies. And we'll also discuss and share how you tie DISC into all of this our most favorite tool and then we'll wrap things up so that's the plan that's the agenda today so john i'm going to turn it over to you when we think about competencies and the importance of understanding the difference between what is trainable and untrainable in the way of mm -hmm. competencies how do you break those two down you know, I, 
it's interesting because I always, I had a boss for a long time who was my original mentor. And he always spoke of uh, when we were looking at people or interviewing for a position of skills, experience. And he, he spoke about those things, but he also, he, I remember he would hold his hand out as if he had this receptacle in his hand. And he said, do they have this? You know, at first I think, what are you talking about? But the things, the skills and the experience are things that we can teach people. The other stuff is what they bring through who they are, their life experience, their personal attributes, behaviors, and attitudes about life that that you can't really measure. You can measure. Let me like take that back. But it's not something that you, it's easily trained. And some people could say that you can't train that. It's one of those things that, that I like to say people either either they got it or they don't. Okay. So those are the kind of things that we're talking about. If you're talking about skills, whether they have public speaking spill, skills or whether they can ask open-ended questions and phrase them the proper way, you can teach them that stuff. But things like attitudes and behaviors and, and their perspective on life. You can't do that. That's what they've gained over the course of their lifetime. And that's one of the things that we teach people here at Results Driven Leadership is how to identify whether they have that or not. Because that's so important when you're selecting a candidate, because you, you can go under the pretense that they already have the skills that you need to, to, to do the job or those basic technical skills, but those added to the ones, the things that are the inherent competencies, those are the things that most often, most frequently make for a good or a poor match in a job relationship. I've, I can't remember a single time in my multi-decade career that I ever fired anybody because of a lack of experience, but I fired almost 100% of everybody right. I let go. This was because of some competency they were, uh, they, they, they did not possess or they had a mm -hmm. very negative competency. It's the behaviors that create the issues, not the lack of experience. Absolutely. And again, to your point, that's the kind of things that you can fall in love with a resume, what's on that resume, but no one on that resume is going to tell you, hey, guess what? I've got a bad attitude or, or I'm not very um, receptive to, to coaching and I'm not a team player. They're not going to put that on the resume, but that, or I don't like to work hard. That's the kind of of attributes that you need to identify and we can train people we can train listeners how to do that absolutely that's in our course how to hire great people in fact i'll put a link to that course in the show yeah. notes because it's very in-depth it provides you every tool every form but most importantly the videos around what you have to think about and as you're interviewing somebody it's important we teach everybody to do this john of course is you've got to flip how you interview somebody. You've got to put your priorities in a different order. And then I've got to hire the right human, the right person, mm -hmm. not their experience. And you said it just a couple seconds ago, people fall in love with a resume and they feel so, I don't know, anxious to hire this great person with all this great experience into their mm -hmm. organization. And that's where we often miss these negative competencies that are untrainable. And we bring in this bad player or inadequate player into our organization because we were blinded by that resume. And if you will put your, your priorities in order in that, let me find the right person first who has these inherent co competencies that I require. And it's different from leader yeah. to leader, from company to company, John. It's, Absolutely. It's a little different. I can teach somebody how to change a tire. I can teach somebody how to use Excel. I can teach somebody how to put boxes away on a shelf, but I can't teach them work ethic is what we're mm -hmm. talking about. I can't yeah. teach them integrity. They, I can't teach them to be coachable. Those are the kind of competencies. In fact, let's let, I'm just going to turn that over to you, John. Share with the listeners some of these positive competencies, for examples, and these, this is, a, you'll give us a list. You won't give us the entire list because it's pretty long, but right. this is an example list. Give us eight, 10 yeah. of them. Well, that, you already mentioned, important. yeah, you mentioned integrity. 
So that's the quality. If somebody isn't honest, if they're not ethical, if they don't have any sense of principles and a moral compass in their actions and decisions, they're not going to be a great employee and they're going to probably do some things that you don't agree with within your organization or to your customers. So that's one of those things that either you got it or you don't. Another one is empathy. Do they have the ability to understand and share feelings and perspectives of others? And that's so important, especially when you're dealing with customers, with customers or employees. If you don't have empathy for somebody, if something bad happens or you have a personal tragedy or if something goes wrong with a product, that's not going to go very far in building that goodwill with your customer. So really important that they have that. Resilience, do they do they bounce back from setbacks? Because invariably, we all have them. You, you and I both went through long careers, and I can't tell you how many times over the course of the years, things didn't work out the way I wanted them to. And there's sometimes, man, you just want to just go home and not come back. But you you gather yourself, you pull yourself, use the old saying, pull yourself up by the bootstraps and you, and you go back to and fight another battle. So it's one of those things you can't teach people and having the positive, the ability to overcome those things so important. Creativity, and we're missing our creative mind, Eric, today, but creative creativity, having that juice, the imagination, and to be able to generate innovative ideas in, in all of those things. And either you have that or you don't, you can't teach that. You can't teach somebody how to be creative. Um, and that includes and, problem solving and creativity, right? Absolutely. Right. Yeah. yeah. And, and, being a a resource for doing that for your people because when a problem comes up very often maybe you haven't seen it quite that way or under that circumstance or situation so you have to be able to come up with ideas and use your resources to generate those problem solving ideas and again that's what makes our jobs challenging but fun authenticity we had a blog about that a couple of weeks ago and the ability to be true to yourself and transparent in your interactions with people, you know, so that you're always the same person, no matter whether you're working or whether you're not. So people understand what they're getting. I remember I had a, a, a colleague one time, unfortunately, this person wasn't such a great boss because I remember people mentioning that when that manager came to visit them, they weren't sure what they were going to get that day. And, and again, understanding so that there's a level set of who Vaughn is or who John is on any given day it should never really change. Charisma. Does somebody have charisma? Can they inspire people? Can they lead a team? Can they be the person that can get people to, to walk through walls for them? That sort of thing is so important, especially if you're looking for a leader. But again, you can't teach that to people. Positive attitude. Is that talk about if you hang around, if you surround your piece yourself with people who have a negative attitude, it rubs off. It's not very pleasant. But is can somebody maintain optimism, enthusiasm, and have a constructive mindset when things are challenging? That's the kind of person that you want to hire. All of these things are so important to, to, to creating that model employer, the person that you want to have on your team. Because I know you're going to cover some of the things that we probably don't want to bring on the team as well. But the when you have someone who's got all of these attributes, and there's more that we could bring up, that you're going to have the 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 catalyst for a great employee. Okay, and, and to your point, we can train them on the other stuff. If you want to teach them how to train change a tire, if you've got somebody who's got intuition, curiosity, and in a positive attitude. When it's time to change the tire, they're not going to give you a hard time and they're going to get it done. They're going to figure out a way to do that with you. You can give them the skills, you can give them the experiences and the knowledge, and you can go a great to great distances with somebody when they've got these great inherent characteristics when you bring them on board. These competencies are so important. And I got to tell you, we've got ways to determine that in behavior-based interviewing skills that we teach it results-driven training, leadership. So that's one of those things that, that again, I can't under underemphasize how important it is or overemphasize how important it is to have those skills to be able to determine that. And one, one way we have to do that to determine some of these is the DISC profile. It's something that we offer, and I'm a big believer in it now because a lot of times you can 
really determine what people's behavioral tendencies are. You, we can do it ahead of time. It's scientific and it makes a lot of sense, but being able to determine whether they have these positive characteristics up front, even before you interview them, man, you're just way ahead of the career of them. Yeah. Yeah. Said, and we love the disc. We use the disc extensively throughout all the different programs that we offer. And as, as usual, I'm going to put the link to a free disc assessment at the very top of the show notes. If you're interested in finding out more about your own personal behavioral tendencies, what your profile is, that will give you a great insight of how you can then look at those around you as a manager or as a business owner and understand the value of, of knowing this information, the window into their soul. You tie that back into what we're talking about here, which are the competencies. And you're so far ahead of the people game, which is, let me tell you, if you don't have this game down, you're going to fail, you're going to struggle, mm -hmm. you're going to be frustrated. And that's what all this is about, is to help you be better at what you do. And so that's what all this is about. And John, we talk about this in interviewing. It's also how we review people, how we hold people accountable, how we think about people that we're considering for promotion. This is one of the single most common mistakes businesses make is they promote a hard worker. They promote somebody that has a high level of skill, the stuff that they trained in. Right. But if they're missing, let's think about promoting somebody into management that doesn't have integrity doesn't have empathy, doesn't care about people, isn't resilient, can't problem solve because they lack creativity, aren't very authentic, aren't very curious and looking for things to, mm -hmm. to get better. They don't have the ability to win people over to a certain level of charisma and they bring a negative attitude. They don't have a positive attitude. Yeah. Boom, you're dead. Yeah. That person's yeah. going to fail and fail miserably. And so you've got to take that into the formula for when I'm not only hiring people, reviewing people, but promoting people. Really important. Let's talk about the other side of this is, are the competencies that lead to failure or lead to underperformance? And some of these negative competencies are poor communication, they have ineffective communication skills, such as being a poor listener. Almost every time I've ever asked somebody, who's the worst boss you ever had? Their inability to listen to others, to collaborate with others, take other people's opinions into account, not listening to people. So they end up making decisions with a lack of clarity, a lack of information. So they make really poor decisions or they're overly aggressive in making decisions, or maybe they're too passive in their decisions. Um, it just creates a bunch of misunderstanding and misdirection and mistakes if they have poor communication still. So it's not their ability to necessarily just speak, but listening and communicating information to others in a way that is understandable mm -hmm. is, a, a, is the sign of a good communicator, but if they're a poor communicator and they're not, they don't especially have the ability to listen, they're not a good listener, bad competency. And you can't train somebody to do that. Lack of accountability. They don't own their own crap. They don't own their mistakes. Think about that person. Mm -hmm. I was at a client's office this morning who had fired a customer service manager primarily because this customer service manager took no responsibility for anything ever went wrong, took all the credit for everything that went right, right in front of her people, and her people despised her. So guess what they didn't do? Work hard for her. So when somebody has a lack of accountability, whether it's in a leadership role or an employee role, how is anybody ever going to get better and grow and mm -hmm. deliver a higher quality product to you from what you're paying them? They're, they're not responsible for what they're doing, nor are they willing to get any better at what they're doing. It's just going to hinder not only their success, but you're mm -hmm. the one that's going to be 
the downside of this because they're going to affect you and your organization negatively. It's going to hold back other team members when this person isn't pulling their weight and owning it. That's another really big issue with teamwork is when you have one player that's not holding up their end of the bargain, that brings down the rest of the team. And it, it frustrates them. There's an issue of fairness that comes involved. It's a really big impact on that. Someone who is resistant to change. I can't change somebody or I can't train somebody to be open to change all of a sudden. That's mm -hmm. born in them. In fact, that's one of those things that DISC can uncover for someone is if they have a strong resistance to change, whether it's whether they're just reluctant or rigid, stubborn, that's going to impede an employer's ability to grow, to adapt new technologies, to adapt new processes, to make organizational changes. They're going to fight you or slow roll you or passive aggressively affect how effective you can be in making positive changes within the organization. Someone who is inflexible, again, this can uncover this too, but you need to know the right questions to ask, which we can give you. We will give you every question you need to uncover these. You just probably don't know them today. And I'm gonna go off into a little bit of a ditch here, but you can't just ask somebody, are you inflexible? That's not how it works. Let me guess, give you the. Are you times, no one is going to answer. Negative? Are you negative all the time? That's not how that works. There's a much deeper approach to that. But if they are inflexible, they're not willing to do things or accept things or negotiate on on issues or adapt to situations. It's going to limit a person's ability to work in a diverse workplace be able to fit into any environment fairly well. It's going to hamper teamwork once again. And certainly it's going to affect the organization's growth for sure. So you have to watch out for these like a virus. And there's there's dozens of them, but these things that I've named so far are just a few examples of why people fail and all the training in the world will not change this in them. And as an employer, as a boss, as a business owner, if you don't recognize this as part of your DNA as an organization, that's this competency-based framework we're talking about. Is this not a core part of how you approach your business? I'm going to surround myself with the right DNA individuals. And when you do that well, you get trained and skilled at how to do this, and we can teach you how to do it. We can give you every piece of information, every tool you need to do it. It is a game changer. John, you work for, mm -hmm. I've worked for, you and I worked right. for the same organization that was very good at this. I worked for another Fortune 100 best places to work for 20 plus years. This was their foundational approach to the people side of the business. And it's not magic. It's just so different than how most businesses operate or think about managing and leading and hiring people that once they get it, it is, oh, this is amazing. Well, I haven't done this all my life. Because if you don't embrace these competencies, mm -hmm. you're looking at impaired performance, strained relationships, mm -hmm. stagnation. You're going to miss a bunch of opportunities. You're, I'm, I guarantee you, you have made... I've not made changes within your organization that you've wanted to make because you didn't want to fight the fight to get your people to adapt or adopt the change. Think right. about that. Your people are now managing you versus you managing them. And again, if they don't have this in them, you can't train them. So I'm sorry, you're going to have to find different people. That's the problem. That's the problem. It This all trickles down to affect your business in many different ways. So if you, you're not happy with your team's performance, if they're not hitting their goals, if they lack initiative, if they, they undermine teamwork, they're causing problems, they're talking behind yeah. people's back, they just overall poor job performance. 
That's what these negative competencies bring you. If you've got, if you've got teams that don't work well together, where you've got colleagues or managers or stakeholders with poor communication or lack of accountability or are inflexible, your these strained relationships bleed over to your company's performance, your ability to deliver the goals. Yeah, but I was thinking, you know, just in another industry, think about this. Okay, think about. And we just went through the NFL draft a couple of weeks ago, right? But you think about you've got all these athletes and they're projected to be top draft picks, number one draft picks, top 10 of the, the whole draft. And you'll see a lot of these, these and they're gentlemen, I guess <laughs> the complete part, but fall out of that top 10 because of things. They can run fast as, as fast as the winner, they're the fastest person, they're the strongest person. They've got the highest you know, skill level of anybody, physical skills, but they fall. Why? Because of things like off-field behavior. They're, if they're a cancer in the locker room, they're not a good team player. They don't study hard. They don't learn the playbooks. And they don't have accountability when they're interviewed. They look for all these behaviors. Again, you can be the most skilled. You can be the fastest receiver. But if you're a bad locker room guy, okay, and you can just translate this over to your own business, Mr. Business Owner or, or Mr. Business Executive or Manager or your team member on your team. If they're that bad locker room person, they're going to be a virus. They're going to infect the whole locker room. Your team will be dysfunctional. You won't be happy, Mr. Ms. Ms. Manager, because this person that you brought in, Vaughn, you you mentioned on several occasions, you hire the human being. Make sure it's a great human being, regardless of that. And again, in our most of our industries, they don't need to be the fastest person or have those kind of physical skills, but they they do need to have these inherent competencies to be effective and be a great team member for you. So if you want to have a great team, a, a even better team, a better business, and better results be looking for these behaviors because that's going to be all the difference. And again, you know, take it from the take it from the pros, take it from the NFL and Major League Baseball and the National Hockey League and NBA. When somebody falls out of the top 10, there's probably a reason it ain't because they can't run real fast most of the time. Yep. And you know, so it's it's so important that you embrace this. And it's so important that you understand the complexity of all this. And I, you give me an inexperienced individual that has a bunch of these positive co competencies, I'll win every time. I can train them these other things. I can train them how to do their job. And if you build in these positive consequences or competencies, you're going to have nothing but positive consequences out of that. They can have all the experience in the world if they have these negative or lack these competencies. It's nothing but negative outcomes that's going to come from that. It yeah. just makes life hard. I've often said, give me less experience or no experience. With the right person, I can take over the world. I can accomplish mm -hmm. anything. So it, But that's where we have to reconfigure our thought process because most people don't think about it. Most hiring decision makers don't think about it. Most promotion decision makers don't think about it like this. So we don't hold people accountable to this in their monthly reviews. It's not part of our core values as an organization that we're all living by these rules that we're going to display all these competencies. And this is what we're accountable to. That'll get your goals. What will hold you back are the negative competencies. It's right. the competencies are the inputs that create the outputs. And so you give me these positive inputs with positive attitude and creativity and work ethic. You give me all those positive inputs, you're guaranteed a positive output. 100% of the time. Please just think about that. And, and let me also share with you real quickly because we're going to wrap this up is there's a big problem with all this because there's for example competency based interviewing has been around for a long time hell john you and i learned it over 20 years ago right oh, yeah. 
it's and it's gaining more and more recognition as it becomes harder and harder in today's world to find soft skills in, indi in individuals. And, there, and very often we have people interviewing for new people to come on board. The people doing the interview and don't have the soft skills. They don't have the ability to uncover all of this. Mm -hmm. It's trainable. And let me just give you some stats, which I love to do. Statistics indicate that there is a significant portion of companies in their hiring processes that honestly don't utilize this approach. Don't even think about it. Only 45% of hiring managers report knowing anything about this, that they use behavior-based questions, 45%. So that's a very, that's less than half, obviously. And then SHRM, which is the Society for Human Resource Management, that's, that is the Kleenex of HR certifications. Their last survey on this revealed that only 23% of the HR professionals consistently use competency models. So I'm a company, I hire an HR professional to make sure I'm hiring great people you've got a, almost a seven out of 10 chance that person does not know how to do what we're talking about, that does not utilize the competency as the core of their decision-making. So it's a huge issue. It is a global issue. When at, not, maybe it's all over the world, but certainly across every industry, every kind of job, large, small, it is a huge opportunity for employers to get better at what they're doing. And by getting better at this one thing, it's a huge game changer. And, and no wonder we have such a low success rate. Oh, it's it. you and I know how well it works, yeah. but we also know a, a part of the business that others have just not been exposed to. And mm -hmm. until you, you've operated in this and practiced it and understand how it works, you just, you've got to learn how it, the what's behind it. You got to understand the why's behind it. And then once you start practicing it slowly, but surely the gates of success will open wider and wider. It's pretty incredible. And we'd love to be able to share all that with you. So we've got the free disc assessment in the show notes, everyone. I'll put in there how to hire great people, how to be a great communicator. I'll put some of these courses in there so you all can look them over. Mm -hmm. If you decide to invest in yourself, please do, because it's exceptional learning in there for a very low price. If you want to talk to John or you want to talk to me about your situation, we've got an opportunity for you to either contact us through the website, rdltraining.com, or you can join us for office hours. I'll put a link to how you can sign up for our office hours. You can bring your situation to a live uh, audience of us. And we would be more than happy to talk through your situation, give you some guidance, give you some tips, share some information with you so that you can solve your challenges, solve your problems. We'll solve your people problems, won't we, John? We will. We will. And, and if you join us, it's, it's 11 o'clock uh, Eastern time, uh, 8 o'clock Pacific time on Wednesdays every week. We'd love to have you there and break bread with you and discuss what's on your mind. Yeah. So it's a great opportunity for you. If you're a new manager, an emerging manager, a manager has been managing people for mm -hmm. decades, a business owner, a new business owner, an experienced business owner. If you've got people problems, Come on, work with us. Let us give to you for free some great advice based on decades of experience of doing it the right way. We've done it the wrong way, haven't we, John? Oh, we have. We played plenty of mistakes. And we, but we've we, learned along we, the way. We've learned things. Absolutely. We felt the pain, but we also Ooh. found a way out of it. Right. And so we can relate to this. We're not, we were never perfect. We're still striving to be better. We'll never be perfect, but we know ways that you don't, that we can help you with that. So with all that, we appreciate everyone listening to the show today and every other show. Please, again, follow us, share us, give us a 
put a nice review on there if you don't mind. We'd love to have that. That helps us with the ag algorithm for more people to find us. And we'll talk to you all next week. You guys rock on. Talk to you soon. Well, that's a wrap on another episode of the Business Mechanic Show. If today's content resonates with you, then you're going to love what we have to offer. For those of you who are ready to take your business or personal career to the next level, we have an array of training and coaching services tailored just for you. From performance coaching designed to enhance your potential, to executive coaching that guides leaders to steer their ships towards greater success. Are you in sales management or looking to fortify your leadership acumen? Dive into our sales management training and coaching. Not only will it sharpen your strategies, but it will also provide you an ROI that's undeniable. Remember, the best investment you can make is in yourself and your team. For those seeking flexible learning options, we're excited to share our online and in-person management leadership classes. These aren't just your typical courses. They are meticulously crafted, ensuring that they align with your unique needs and aspirations. And the best part, prices start at just $47 per month, making top-tier coaching and training accessible for everyone. Your growth, both personally and professionally, can have a ripple effect. The one I call the transformational triangle of change. The skills you learn, the perspectives you gain, and the efficiencies you create can translate into increased revenues, more cohesive teams, and an enriched company culture. So why wait? The potential ROI on this investment isn't just in dollars. It's in the progressive future you're carving out for yourself and your organization. Thanks once again for tuning in. And remember, every business needs a tune up every now and then. Let the Business Mechanic Show be your guide. Check out our website, rdltraining.com, to discover more details on our programs and coaches. We have a link in the show notes to guide you there. Until next time, we're out of here. Ryan Reynolds here from Mint Mobile. With the price of just about everything going up during inflation, we thought we'd bring our prices down. So to help us, we brought in a reverse auctioneer, which is apparently a thing. Mint Mobile Unlimited Premium Wireless. Ready to get 30, 30, ready to get 30, ready to get 20, 20, 20, ready to get 20, 20, ready to get 15, 15, 15, 15, just 15 bucks a month. So give it a try at mintmobile.com slash switch. $45 upfront payment equivalent to $15 per month. New customers on first three month plan only. Taxes and fees extra. Speed slower above 40 gigabytes in detail. Despite the unshakable Iowa corn Cyhawk rivalry, there is one thing Iowa State and University of Iowa fans can both agree on. Getting hyped for unleaded 88. It's cleaner burning and better for your engine, and it's cheaper than other fuel options, making unleaded 88 the clear fuel choice. If Iowa corn Cyhawk rivals can agree on it, you know it's worth the hype. So pump it up with unleaded 88, grown by Iowa corn farmers.